Diffusion can also occur through cell membranes. However, cell membranes are selectively permeable. This means that some substances can diffuse through a cell membrane, while others cannot. The flow of ions or molecules through a cell membrane as a result of diffusion is referred to as passive transport. It is referred to as passive transport as it requires no energy from the cell in order to carry a substance across the membrane. In the process of passive transport, the membrane acts as a filter. Phospholipids and protein channels control which molecules can cross the membrane and may influence the rate and timing of the movement of ions and molecules across the membrane. But they do not influence the direction of movement. Substances continue to move only from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. Let's now look at three types of passive transport that occur as a result of diffusion. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Simple diffusion is the process by which gases, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, dissolve in water, and phospholipid-soluble molecules, such as ethyl alcohol and vitamin A, diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer. This is referred to as simple diffusion because these substances can cross anywhere along the phospholipid bilayer, while most other types of diffusion, such as facilitated diffusion, which we will look at in a moment, requires a substance to cross the membrane through a protein channel or with the help of a carrier protein. Generally, the rate of simple diffusion of a substance across a membrane is a function of the relative concentration of the substance on either side of the membrane, the size of the substance's molecules, and on that substance's lipid solubility. In the process of facilitated diffusion, either channel proteins or carrier proteins facilitate the crossing of a cellular membrane by water-soluble substances such as sodium, potassium, and calcium ions, amino acids, and monosaccharides, which cannot typically diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. As we saw earlier, each type of channel protein is typically lined with specific amino acids and has a unique diameter in order to allow only certain ions or other substances to pass. Channel proteins also often have gates which open and close in response to electrical or chemical signals. Carrier proteins, as we saw earlier, attach to specific molecules in the cytoplasm or extracellular fluid. The attachment triggers changes in the shape of the carrier protein that allows the molecule to pass through the protein and thus cross the plasma membrane. Some carrier proteins don't use cellular energy and only allow ions and molecules through the membrane that would normally pass through as a result of diffusion. However, as we will see later, there are carrier proteins that use cellular energy to carry substances against the flow created by diffusion. 